Good morning, I'm Linda Stone from City Flowers in New Buffalo, Michigan. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a one-sided, just mixed arrangement that you can do with any type of flowers that you have. So we'll get rolling here. Um, I'll go through what I am gonna put in here, what I have, but you can use anything. You don't have to necessarily use what I'm using. Um, this is Delphinium. I have some blue iris, yellow roses. I've got some hot pink Gerber daisies. Uh, white lilies, these are oriental lilies, and Ulstramaria, and some branched solidago for the filler, and then on the other side I've got some greens. So we'll start, um, when you're doing a vase arrangement, what I've done with this, if you can see this, I've done a grid with some um, half inch oasis tape. Um, you could potentially do scotch tape, it's a little bit wider, but this helps your flowers stand up um, so that everything doesn't flop to the center. So I'm going to start with establishing my height and a good proportion for height is one to one and a half times the size of your container. That keeps everything in balance. So I'm going to cut that and since this arrangement is going to be a one-sided one, we're going to start placing our, instead of in the center, we're going to place our tallest flowers at the back. So this is called flat backing where there's nothing sticking out on this side. This is good for um, tight spaces where something's up against a wall, um, a hospital arrangement where they don't have a lot of room to set it in the middle of a little table. It can go be pushed up against the nightstand or something in the back. Okay, so I've got that. Now, next I'm gonna put in my lilies. And with the lilies, I'm gonna strip this foliage that would be under the water here. Always have your waste basket handy. It saves a lot of cleanup at the end. And I'm gonna cut that. Now these have multiple laterals on them. I may have to take one of these off if I see that the lily is too tall. But I think this one, I'm gonna put this one right in the center actually. And um, I pulled most of the pollen off of here, but if you can see these little stamens here, this is the pollen. I wanna pluck that before it gets all yellow and fuzzy. That will help extend the life of your flowers and keep them from getting stained with all that yellow pollen fuzz. So I'm gonna put in a couple. I think I might only use two. I've got three here, but I don't think I'm going to need all three for this. So strip your leaves that would be under the water. And I'm going to pluck the pollen out of this one. And we'll put that one right on that side. I don't think we need this third one that I brought out. Okay, next I'm going to put in my Alstromeria. And this I'm going to do in between the lilies. And if there's any, like this one didn't have a bloom on it or it broke off, just snip off those laterals right at the base. There's our Alstrom area. We're going to put one up high in the middle here. I often do things in threes, but not always. Um, like the lilies, two was enough. Three would be overbearing for this arrangement. But three gives you triangles, gives you roundness, gives you balance. So three works good a lot of times, but it's not a hard, fast rule. Okay, we've got the Alstromeria in. We're going to put in the iris next. This will help pick up the blue from the color of the delphinium that we have in the back. And we've got that, I love the nice little pop of bright yellow in the iris. It looks very springy. Which, I live in Michigan, so it's been a snowy gray week here and I'm ready for spring. As soon as it wants to arrive, Okay, let me move that out of the way. Okay, so it's taken shape. We're gonna add our yellow roses here. If you cut things at an angle, it does help the flowers to take up water better um, than cutting them flat. So 
the end of the stem is not right up against the bottom of the vase. And with roses, sometimes they come in with bruised petals. You might want to just pluck those ones off that have a little bit of browning or look transparent. Just pluck those right off to the bottom of the flower. And then you have a nice clean look. So we're going to put, oh, one of the, the ways you can tell if a rose is fresh enough or not, squeeze it down here at the bottom. If it just kind of opens up really fast, then it's too loose, it's not firm enough. If you squeeze this and all the petals just went like that, don't buy those. You probably can't get away with squeezing those, like, like squeezing the Charmin, for those of you who are old enough to remember that commercial probably can't do that in the store but um, that's one way to tell because you can't always tell by looking at a flower what the quality of it is sometimes you have to touch it and feel it and put one rose right in the front and I think that one's a little bit taller than I want it so it's always good to not cut it too short in the beginning balance it and put our other one right back here. Oh, that one is starting to come apart. Okay, I will have to replace that. Now, let me take that out and I will show you what happened here. There is a little seed pod that you can see starting to come out. This is loose right there. And sometimes that's just a genetic defect of the flower. Um, I'm just going to pull these off so you can see that. If that, if the petals are not fully attached to the calyx right there, that's what will happen. One side of the flower will fall apart. The other side will stay intact. So didn't realize that was going to happen. I'm just going to pop this in there for the visual right now and I'll fix it. Later, we would never send it out that way, but okay, I'm gonna get rid of this. And we've got our hot daisies to put in there. You want usually your bigger, heavier flowers down at the bottom. Um, my dog is bothering the cameraman again, so. If you hear some scratching going on, it's bubbles. You probably, if you've watched these videos before, you're getting to know Bubbles and Teddy. The two rescue shelter dogs I have. Okay, this one is competing with that lily when I put it there. So I think this time I'll, I'll see what it looks like up here. Sometimes I can get away with that, putting it up there. Sometimes it just makes it look too top heavy. Um, but I think in this case it balances the color. So I'm going to leave it right there. Now if you notice the back of this is just flat. That's what we were aiming for with this one. So that we don't have stuff sticking way out here and it takes up that much more room. Okay, now I'm going to add our filler. This is called Branched Solidago. And I'm just going to cut a few of these laterals off at different heights and then I can always go back and cut them again depending on how tall they want them. Stripping the foliage off. Let me start popping these in there. You always want to do a fresh cut on your flowers but since I just did cut these it's okay just to put them in but if I wanted at a different height I can recut it. And I don't need to necessarily use all of this. Just again trying to balance the color out so that when you look at it it doesn't look like you didn't finish one side of it. 
think one more piece and we're good with this. Where to cut things just kind of comes as you do it. Um, in the beginning, I was always snipping and snipping and snipping. And But if you, a good way to measure is just pull your base to the edge of the table, hold the thing up, and then measure from there, from the edge of the table. Um, that's a good way to start to learn how tall to cut things. I'm going to put one right there. And I think we've got that well balanced in there. Get rid of this. Now I've got some different greens over here. I've got Myrtle. And I've got Italian Ruscus, which is this one. And I've got Bear Grass. So I'm going to cut the ladder over this Italian Ruscus a little bit. Oh, and I didn't cut my bottom piece. I like this because it it's wispy. You can use it around the edges and it kind of hangs out a little bit. If it's too long, you can just cut it in the middle and make two pieces out of it. We won't use all these greens that I brought, but then we're going to add some myrtle. A little bit of myrtle up high. Again, but trying to keep with the flat back look of this. We don't want to have anything sticking out much in the back. But it adds a little bit more interest to have some greenery back here. And this one is really tall, so I'm gonna just snip it there and then snip this one here. And I can use both pieces. And now I'm gonna put in a little bit of this grass. This is called bear grass. There's also a wider grass called lily grass that you can use. I like the grasses. I like the soft wispiness of it. And you don't need a lot of it to make a statement. Just, just a little bit. You have to be careful with this bear grass because it is sharp and you can cut yourself on it. I've done it many times. I've also when I'm sticking it in, I poke myself in the eye with the tip of it, which really hurts. So um, it's one of the little bit more dangerous of the flower world or foliage world to use. See how the grass adds the softness and the wispiness of it against the harshness of, I don't mean the flowers are harsh, but the heaviness of the big clump of the flowers that you have in there together, the mass. This adds a different, and you can just go back and snip them off if you don't like how long they are. I usually put them in in clumps, twos or threes together. Put one more right there. And I think we are finished with this one. Ooh, tip it over, spill all the water. So I hope you enjoyed this, um, that you learned something today, and I hope you'll come back for my next one. Thank you.